Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Squad, joined by the nation's favourite dish, Josh Brown. Hello, thank you for that again. Any single time, it will always come. Now, speaking of things that will always come, Mass Effect is alive and kicking. Is it though? No, but it is alive. And um, so, confirmed by Mr. Jason Trier, always Mr. Jason Trier, one of the only journalists that we have in this <laughs> realm. And um, confirmed at the end of his report on Anthem being rebooted and Bioware taking another look at all their different IPs, that Mass Effect is still in development at Bioware Edmonton. Which right. is a bit of a thing. It is a bit of a thing. I'm going to start calling this the Kotaku tease, right? Because it happens every so often when they're doing a <laughs> the big tease. report. The Kotaku that's the one. Good. When they're doing a, doing a report on a completely different thing, then they're like, also, by the way, this is happening and exists. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a line and then we might follow up on it later on. But we're going to give you lots to speculate over. Yeah. The Mass Effect is one of these things. This does make sense because at one point the franchise was on ice. Mm. And then we heard some rumblings that something was happening. But, Scott, tell me more. What's actually well, going not, on? There's not much to tell you other than it's... It's with Bioware Edmonton, which is their main studio responsible for all the all your favorite gems from Mass Effect 2 all the way back to the likes of Baldur's Gate and whatever. Um, and the fact that the, the lead project uh, director is Mike Gamble, um, which is a hilarious name considering the stakes that are riding on Whoa! Mass Effect. Um, Whoa! Sadly, it's not Mike Guaranteed Good Game. Very good. Which I, it's not, that's bad, but I'd like that <laughs> if that was his name. But anyway, Mr. Mike Gamble's heading it up. Uh, he's the dude that came in on Mass Effect 2's DLC, Kasumi Overlord, um, and Lair of the Shadow Broker, which is easily like the best DLC. DLC probably ever, yeah, to be really. honest. Um, absolutely phenomenal piece of work. Um, but he then went on to sort of be heavily involved in Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda, which was, you know, kind of the, the bit of a downward turn. The thing is, though, I was checking out the resume before this. Mm. He wasn't sort of like the creative director or anything like no. that. He was involved, obviously. But you've seen time and time again when people who have worked on franchises for a long time finally get to have their sort of creative say and mm. lead a project. For instance, you know, Neil Druckmann worked on the first couple of Uncharted and then finally got the chance to write and direct Uncharted 4. Mm -hmm. And although he'd worked on them prior to, you know, becoming getting promoted, mm -hmm. It was a very distinct shift from Uncharted 3 to Uncharted 4, in my oh, opinion, yeah, yeah. away from the Amy Hennig sort of stuff, which is great, but they're just very different things. So mm. hopefully, old Mike has had some um, ideas for this franchise for a while and will hopefully be able to get to capitalize on them. Because mm -hmm. from the reports on Mass Effect Andromeda, which were also from uh, Kotaku, yes. the major issue seemed to be a lack of real creative vision that the everyone could sort of work towards. It mm. felt like everyone was just sort of having their you know, two cents about what the game should be, everyone was pitching in, and there was mm -hmm. no sort of cohesive guiding vision that made the game coalesce into something mm -hmm. great. Well, hopefully they have sorted this out now, and my friend Mike, Big, big, Mr. 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 big Gambly, Big Gambly Gamblers. I think uh, Gamblor is what I'm going to start referring to him as because Don't that's like the that. word that popped into my head. But also, um, it's weird with that because the original report that came out said that they started out doing this No Man's Sky-esque thing with planet generation and stuff like that, but they couldn't get the technology to work. And so the, the scope of the project went from being this massive galaxy-wide thing with so much variation, all these different like environments and levels and things that you could go to. And it got it, it ended up going all the way down to, I think, five planets in the end. A bit more, um, I think, but like, yeah, not many more. Not many more. Not many more. And uh, and so like they kind of I don't I hope they don't go down that route again. I honestly I've always believed in No Man's Sky, but I think that something like Mass Effect needs a more um a more like through line vision. It needs yes. something in terms of like specific scripting, it needs story set pieces, it needs things to work towards. Um what do you think in terms of uh, do they just do they try and do an entirely separate story within the Mass Effect universe, or do they end up going back to Shepard again? Because Shepard is alive at the end of Mass Effect 3. He does yeah. breathe if you get the secret ending or whatever, so he's still alive. I don't think you go back to Shepard. Because not. the the idea of picking up the piece pieces of that story. There's just too much that could go wrong for, mm. for me personally. Mm -hmm. Like every player had their own unique journey through that story. Even though the endings were, you know, A, B, or C essentially, mm -hmm. there were minute details that you could change or alter. For instance, you know, the fate of the quarians or something yeah. like that. And having to account for all of those and carry them all over into a new game is just ridiculous and you'll satisfy no one. <laughs> but at the same time, you don't want to have a completely different thing like Andromeda and then not live up to its potential. Andromeda yeah. should have been good. You yeah. have an entire galaxy full of possibilities and new ideas, mm -hmm. and yet it just sort of felt the same as the Milky Way. That's my issue. I do feel like you can have, you can continue this franchise and have mm. a sort of clean break away from Shepard and his story while still referencing it, but you just need to be confident in what that vision is. You need to yeah, sort yeah. of, you know, reboot Mass Effect in a way. You can still pay homage to what came before, but that mm -hmm. trilogy is done and we love it, and we need something that, you know, continues from that, but mm -hmm. in a way that 
reinvigorates the entire the thing. The thing with Andromeda, and uh, which like, because Andromeda is the is the m mixed mixiest bag. Yes. 10 a.m. that we're recording this. Uh, very mixed bag, and I think that the combat is phenomenal. I, I it, it well not phenomenal, but it's very very solid. Um, and I love the idea of just like you know a certain platoon of people that kind of heed Shepard's words once you find out all the different audio logs and everything behind the reason that they did the Ark project or whatever in the first place is that a bunch of people believed um, you know Shepard about the warnings of the Reapers coming, and they went off to do this like to save humanity and go sideways and but you know like go to this other timeline and try and strive out for themselves and everything. I love that as a setup because mm -hmm. I think that that still allows um, characters to have conversations about what happened. And for me, if, if I was them, I would probably have a conversation somewhere in the game that addresses like the different endings or what happened back with Shepard. Or just have characters saying, well, I don't know what happened, but like, oh, I hope like this happened or I have comments on the Reapers or whatever. Some way that addresses like through the writers, like, yeah. I don't know, like, a way of addressing the, the massive backlash to that game. Because now we've had like two, like Mass Effect 3 went down in history is one of the most disappointing games of all time. Like it's 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 not horrific, but I am firmly on the side of oh my god, what were you doing? Yeah. And so like and after that, Andromeda was like a laughing stock. Like just overnight, everyone found all those gifts of all the different weird animations, and everyone just kind of pointed and laughed at it. And so they've got so much to come back from. But I think that if you just rely on the Mass Effect IP, like through the books and through the different comics, and like there's even a mobile game and whatever, like the Mass Effect name is can hopefully be stronger than that reputation surrounding the negativity. Hopefully. But my, my main worry is is that even though Bioware Edmonton is, is apparently back on board and mm. they were in charge of the games we know and love, mm -hmm. they've also had you know a lot of problems over the years. So a lot of the exposés that have come out have focused on the games they've created, like Dragon Age Inquisition, um, Mass of, uh, Anthem, mm -hmm. and of course Mass Effect 3. And the through line just seems to sort of be that the culture there does, isn't conducive to great games. They rely mm -hmm. heavily on the Bioware magic, which is essentially a yeah. project coming together in the final few months when it's been a complete mess before then. And that worked expertly on Dragon Age Inquisition, but that's increasingly looking like a fluke. That mm -hmm. game, in my opinion, was really, really good, right. but that was in spite of all the issues they faced. And you look at something like Anthem, which, mm -hmm. for all its problems, started as an ambitious creative title. Like, there were real creative ambitions behind that game, mm -hmm. a lot like Mass Effect Andromeda, but the same issue keep plaguing these releases and that's a studio problem that's a management problem mm -hmm. you look at both Anthem and Andromeda which was made by a different team but had help by Edmonton in the end mm -hmm. and both of those games were essentially made in about 18 months or something the <laughs> yeah. idea was there for and much longer tell. yeah they were in production for about five years each but the bulk of production came right the last minute which made for messy broken games that mm -hmm. just had no chance I was going to say like if, uh, I totally recommend going and reading the Kotaku exposés on them just anonymous reports from various staff members that just fill in the, yeah, the reality of what happened on those games development cycles um, because yeah they didn't have a through line vision that they carried forward and I think that it's weird like Bioware have tried multiple times to do open world gaming and it's just resulted in giant open spaces with like very little to do like yeah Inquisition I was very strong on as well but I still know like that whole problem around the hinterlands and that idea that you could get lost in the opening area and you wouldn't the game didn't push you out of there and it had a weird pacing problem where like it didn't serve up its best content unless you really like you know went away from the beaten path and sorted yeah. out um, and then in Andromeda it was like well here's a hand full of giant sort of spaces and planets but again we're not serving you up the best stuff it's just here's a bunch of icons on a map and you could go and do them if you want here's some space sudoku if you fancy it and like all that stuff just it's a it's a weird approach to open it's like they don't get why a game should be open world it's yes like, well i guess we just take these elements and stretch them out it's yeah and this is this mm. is my big cautious worry about any future Bioware game is mm -hmm. that obviously EA are all in on sort of live service games that you can keep paying for and you can keep, you know, adding content to. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of antithetical to the kind of RPGs Bioware made before because even though they were like big and they were open, you had all of these different worlds, mm -hmm. they were very story driven. They were very even kind of linear in a way. Yeah. You could choose different paths, but you were always hit every beat more or less you know in a standard path yeah. whereas i don't know if the answer to that is by saying look we're still an rpg because you've got this massive space to explore <laughs> you've got all of these side quests to do you've got all these activities to mm. do that's not the kind of rpg you know formula no. that i don't think people well, come to bioware for no and to be honest like we was anyone even asking for bigger more open-ended stuff like mass <sighs> effect 2 is one of the greatest games of all time mass effect 1 is still up there and mass effect 3 is solid enough even though i think it drops the ball story-wise but none of those games you were playing them going like oh well it's missing this 
place. Like, no, it was an exemplary execution on yep. a certain formula. Scott Telford, I'm going to tell you what did it, and it was Dragon Age <laughs> 2, right? Because Dragon Ooh. Age Origins was this huge, expansive game, right. RPG, fantasy game, with a massive story. And then Dragon Age 2 came out, and it was about one city big, and you were going through the same dungeons over again, and mm -hmm. there was no content. Everyone complained. Right. So then they made Dragon Age Inquisition, which <laughs> overwhelmed you with content, yeah. but went perhaps too far down the other you know, direction, mm -hmm. where all of it was kind of meaningless. Just the story open. was great, but it was just like, look, there's lots to do. Whether it's any fun, that's up to you. Stay in the hinterlands Ping them for up and go 50 find hours. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I do think is sort of a reaction to Dragon Age, mm. and it might have gone perhaps too far in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And at this point in the industry, sort of, you know, life essentially, mm. where we're expected to get these big games that never end, that provide content forever and ever. Mm -hmm. But again, that, who says that we need that? Is that well, just that suits? Is that people who play the games? Uh -huh. Like, I don't know where that desire for just content for content. Well, if I was if I was going to put my chips down on the board, I would I would 99% say that it is the nebulous suits at the top because it means that you can monetize something over time. How long? As long as someone will care. And so I think that that's what they're trying to do with as many, especially on EA's case, like the likes of Andrew Wilson or whatever, as many open, I guess, many games as a service as possible. Plot forms for content with loot boxes and, and uh, recurrent spending methods and whatever. But something I think that I think that whole approach to gaming will be endemic of this generation and I hope that it dies out going forward. Mainly yeah. because the likes of Sony have had this massive first party uh, push for stories, the likes of God of War and like you know going forward Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and even EA as much as Jedi Fallen Order started before the acquisition of Respawn, at least they didn't kill it. That's true. And it kept going. They did kill a whole bunch of other projects like Project Ragtag um, or whatever. And so I think that I'm hoping that it, they see the value of storytelling going yeah. forward they can have their games as a service you can uh, have your battlefronts but you can also have actual focused storytelling as well because god god knows that it's actual good pr scott i, I just don't know if i can get my hopes up for it that's the issue i i hope <laughs> i hope everything you just said is going to come true but for mm. me dragon age 4 is going to be the big hopefully turning well, point it depends well, if that game turns well. into anthem with dragons like it might you well know, they've literally said yeah, that yeah exactly like yeah, that's been thrown yeah, around if yeah, that happens i'm yeah. not gonna be excited for mass effect 5 which oh. absolutely sucks because mass effect is my favorite franchise i might not be <laughs> here in this chair talking to you about games if not for mass effect 1 i <laughs> bloody love it uh -huh. and to be honest if we're going to get something that just diverges even more widely from what people actually like about mm. the series i might just i think it's just better off dead just you'll you know just not I mean? be here Anymore. I just won't be here anymore. Just, just no, bin it all off. I'll go back in time and then just stop myself <laughs> from playing it and then I'll vanish Josh from Josh is on ice until yeah. some time in the future and we bring him back again. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, let's what we think down in the comments below. Can Mass Effect be resurrected? Where would you go with the franchise? Should they go back to Shepard or should they do something new? I guess if you were Bioware, what the hell would you do to make Mass Effect work again? For now though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Got nothing for Mass Effect. Got nothing, which is just what Bioware have got. <laughs>